Welcome back to the Saturday Ironheart Merchant Company, Session 32, Sweet Old Big Tooth. Last time we left off, the party got into a little bit of a kerfuffle, um, as they ended up leaving the city for what they thought was a simple saber tooth quest, uh, a quest to hunt down a couple of giant cats, um, on the icy shore. However, upon not only realizing the little farm village that had been set up towards uh, at the bottom of Elkoman's um, mountainous stairs uh, had vanished, but they found that the old Goose Lake uh, that the Sunday party had, uh, known as uh, the Unfortunate Sons, had managed to run into an evil goose dragon crossbreed like creature. However, as the uh, party would manage to work together to hold off or end up uh, checking out the area, they'd get end up getting attacked by not only a cobalt dragon, but also a large uh, saber-tooth cat and his own follower, a large beaver that seemed to bite down and tear into both James and tempting on Rollman. Burwood, at the same time, while this was going on, having Cinder taking out not only the single frost toad that had been guarding a leftover uh, egg of sorts at the center of the lake, but taking out the three pillar or four pillars of ice that seemed to have statues carved to look like geese and with people looking like the Sunday party inside of it. Um, as they managed to tear apart uh, four of the markers, the, stat or the large pillar in the center of the lake would come crumbling down, crushing into a hole that would lead into the Underdark, um, with the, the egg as well vanishing below and the bodies turning to an ichor as the statues cracked. The party would manage to take down the Cobalt Dragon with the help of Jakix, Though, as they managed to stop the ritual, changing it with the help of Melvin, they couldn't help but notice they had gathered a large um, interest in their group as a dark cloud would start to pour over the um, icy fields. Um, as the, uh, the spell would go off, a true resurrection being cast away, the uh, image or the... Uh, grouping of Froten and his patrol would manage to clear through the forest and find the party exhausted with few spells left and though very little injuries um, in the situation their hearts more pounding from the situation that had come at hand um, as they sat for the next few hours speaking with Froten. Um, as we return back to the uh, following morning, as I was told by the party they wanted to get their long rest to get their spells back, um, you lot having stayed near the lake where the uh, Roten and his um, guards have kind of spent the night looking around, examining the area, um, you all find yourselves sitting, uh, uh, kind of set up around the edges of the uh, former lake now crater with cracks leading into the underdark uh, come into a wake as the uh, light uh, snow continues to pile up all around the cold wind kind of biting as it's an ice icy 32 degrees um, as we all or as you all come out one at a time just, just like the old days just like home sleeping in the snow Morning. Good morning. What's the plan today, James? Well, we still have to deal with the saber tooths. From what you said, there was a bunch that surrounded us when we were trying to stop that spell. Mm -hmm. Probably so, about a dozen. We should probably try to deal with the rest of them, get the materials, although. As I look to the corpse of the cobalt dragon, <laughs> Sir Yum Yam, and the wall. Mm hmm. I really wish we still had the ship to take those back up the stairs. I don't think I'm going to be able to get up there easily. Do I need to start cutting them up? I we think. Sled. We would like to get. I think we should have someone more professional process them. I've never. I don't know if you've, Uncle, but I have never broken down a draconic body. 
You think you could probably get the uh, frost giants to take it up for us while we continue down here? We can ask. I mean, we told her in the story, so... It's to your discretion. Yes, it'll be walking over to Hoten and seeing how everything's going. Yeah, as you I'm kinda, guessing he spent the night validating the claims. As you head over, uh, you see roten has got a small little tent set up. Um, a couple of guards posted out as people are coming. Couriers are coming running in and out. Uh, some shouting orders. Some uh, seemingly running out with documents uh, kind of in their hands, running back towards the mountain keep. Um, as you kind of push by, a courier comes running, kind of, uh, runs through, uh, passing you almost immediately as they sprint off. Um, as the flap or the tent flap opens, uh, Roten stands over a map, a very large map. Uh, looks like of the entire or a detailed area uh, map of the area of the entirety of um, King Utham's uh, empire that he's built. Um, stretching all the way from the collective of the Py of Pyrus uh, in the east, or sorry, in the west, uh, to all the way to the uh, crystal giants in the far east, um, as he kind of looks to be crossing out X marks on it with a uh, kind of pen dipped in ink. Uh, he looks up at you, uh, clear exhaustion as his eyes, as the bags are getting thicker underneath, um, as he looks up at you and goes, Oh, James, um, what can I do for you? Uh, morning. I see you didn't sleep too well by the looks of it. I apologize for that. Sleep at all? <laughs> yeah, uh, Regan requires his answers and, yeah, works, work, as they say. What can I do for you, though? Uh, would you all, when you all go back up the mountain, would you be able to take in the draconic bodies and, well, the bodies here that we ended up with and either process them or set them aside for us? I look to the mountain, then look down at myself. I don't think we can carry them up right now. Uh, give me a diplomacy check. Uh, guess I'll pop my friendly face, too. Put on a friendly face. <laughs> 30. Um... <laughs> Kind of looks at you and nods and goes, I mean, Regan won't be happy about the delays, but as long as you're willing to eat the, the chewing out, sure, um, I can ask I'll, my man to do it. I'll take any chewing out. I'll even pay a little bit on top of it for doing us this favor. Ain't nothing about the money. Without Regan Utham's time, you're the one who's delaying the report, so your name's going to be signa signed on the paperwork for it. I that's more than acceptable. He nods and goes, All of the documents written up um, in a few moments. Um, just uh, give, give it a, a second as he kind of like looks over the map and seems to finish up crossing off some things as he goes, kind of steps up and goes to walk over for some more paper. I'll wait there politely. As he kind of sits it, lays it down, starts... Look, kind of holds the pen above the paper and then looks at you and looks down at the paper then looks at you again and goes, Do you mind, um, privacy? Ah. Sorry, I'll step outside then. <laughs> um, as you uh, step out, uh, give me a listen check. Okay. I think I only have a... Twenty-three. As you hear uh, the light kind of pounding of something, like going, like hitting something, then hitting again a few seconds later, then being pressed, and then hitting something again. As a few moments go by of this, um, you hear uh, as, uh, or you, rather, uh, you see as Roten kind of comes stepping out a moment later, kind of stepping through the flap. Um, as he w airs out the uh, paper, kind of waving it a bit uh, in the air, uh, and hands it over to you, uh, and goes, all right, you're going to need to sign the bottom. Um, you can see it's clearly I... written in red ink. I... I'll sign away. All right. As you sign your signature As to... I read it, making sure that it, what it says. Well, that's not what you stated. Um... I... <laughs> so Almost as you sign it... You. Uh, and then as you I'll finish signing, uh, begin to read it. Uh, it reads, 
uh, the following. I, uh, where you signed, uh, have agreed that re any delays in the scouting or information gathered by transporting the uh, items listed at the bottom, and as you looked at the bottom, it reads one cobalt dragon, one saber tooth, and one giant beaver. Uh, will or as and it continues on, uh, any delays caused by these items will be at the source of uh, James uh, of the clan of the Iron Heart Merchant Company, uh, and will be at the responsibility of James of the clan of the Iron Heart Merchant Company. If Regan Utham has any issues or requests on why the delays were caused, this is what will be provided. That's all it mm -hmm. states. Perfectly reasonable. Um, as he kind of f rolls it up and you know, puts it back into a, uh, a thick sheath of uh, for what looks to be scrolls and such and looks over at you again and goes, Um... If there's nothing else. I've got a long day. I do nothing personal, but... Um, Oh, no, I'm, I'm sorry to hold you up. He nods at that, kind of like rubbing his eyes. He goes, oh, and your friend showed up in the middle of the night, the uh, small feathered uh, friend. Ah, oh, Rad. He shrugs and goes, uh, give our entries a bit of a concern, which is why I'm up. Uh, if you are, if you don't mind my asking, are you planning to continue on to do something else, or are you heading back to Velcom and yourself? I figured we would finish what we started when we came down here to do the deal with the saber tooths. He nods and goes, "Oh, understandable. All right, I'll let the Regan know." Um, if there's nothing else, as he kind of looks up at you again. Nothing else. I apologize for keeping you so long. He shrugs and goes back to his work. All right. Well then, let's head out. Did you kind of step out back over to him? Go ahead, Roman. Got it all sorted? Yeah, I may be yelled at by the Regan at some point for any delay it's caused with this. Due to requesting them to take it up, but small price to pay. Alright. Well, did I... When they ran off, did they all run in a certain direction that I could sense? Um, I think from what we gathered uh, earlier, yeah, you were able to tell they're heading uh, north um, towards the coastline, roughly. All right. I guess uh, let's head north. That's where I heard them going during the... Uh, all right. Uh, do I see a red? Uh, as you look about, kind of seeing the tent, your tents, uh, seeing Cinder working away at carving one of the uh, blocks of marble, um, and as you look around, you do see Rad kind of just sitting in a uh, next to the fire, uh, kind of warming his feathers up uh, as the the fire continues roaring. All right, let's go gather those two up and get on out of here then. Uh, we'll go collect those two and. We're going to be heading north after the Sabretooths. Uh, by the way, Red, good job on finding us. Red nods. <laughs> All right. <laughs> As uh, you mentioned this cinder quietly looking at you, uh, the fire kind of still co uh, crackling in the background. Um, you lot begin to kind of t untie up your camp, uh, getting your tents uh, cut, uh, brought down, uh, packed away into your packs, um, and get yourself ready to go. By the time, it takes about another hour of uh, kind of getting everything together as you watch the giants continue to go about uh, looking through the trees, the forests, um, and seem to be cutting down a few trees in the distance, um, but otherwise seem to kind of ignore you lot as you go about your business. Uh, as you start to pack up, finding the what looks to be a little bit of a trail and a split between the trees, uh, you start kind of heading north through the heavy, icy uh, canopy above head. Um, as you hear the snow kind of settling above, uh, the whistling wind kind of coming through the trees um, themselves. Uh, but otherwise, it's almost kind of naturally quieter. Every footstep kind of crunches louder as you walk through. Oh god, there's no birds. 
you look up, no. there is there are no birds as you look in the trees. However, as you see trees with nothing but ice, uh, James, you surmise there probably aren't any uh, birds that are uh, notable in these areas that like ice. Or the icebergs. <laughs> and suddenly like Where that, the, and the ice, famous icebergs. Yeah, and suddenly like that, an ice <laughs> phoenix just erupts out of Rollman. Oh, um, <laughs> you were in the entire time. I knew it. Well, Bruce Almighty. Uh, but yeah, as you start heading through the uh, crackling snow, um, give me survival checks uh, for those who are tracking the footprints of the creatures. Um, if you're just looking for any signs of anything in the area, give me a search check or listen. I'll take either. However, it does matter. Please do state what you're rolling. I will be making a listen check. Okay. That's a six. I'm a hearing shit. James, you're really is. bothered by the idea of this, like, frost bird in the background thinking about it. Um, <laughs> what'd you say, Roland? That's a search. For the search? 17. 17? Okay. Um, all right, well, let's see what the others got. Cinder's 27 for survival. And uh, Rad, are you rolling in the background? Yes. Okay. Oh, I know it you're... It's sweet time. It takes a second. You're good. Yeah, no, I understand. I just figured I'd ask to make sure. Uh, what, was your, what were you going to say, um, uh, Cinder? If it helps, I'm working with Snow, who does have a scent tracking. Okay. That's special. Okay. Keep that in mind. Okay. Uh, listen to 24. 24, okay. Roll them in. As you look about, uh, kind of searching through the woods, uh, looking for any signs of any creatures, something that kind of catches your attention is that there. not only do the trees themselves have large claw marks kind of scratched into them as if a cat was sharpening its claws onto the tree, but there also seems to be a strange mark along a couple of the trees uh, up in the higher areas that... Uh, about 30 feet or so up in some of the higher trees that seem to poke through or poke above, um, you notice it looks almost like every 60 or so feet as you're walking, these trees pop up with this symbol that matches the same one as the one on James's back of James's neck. Um, as you kind of continue through, uh, look off into the distance to the east and west, you notice these trees seem to be spread out almost in a grid-like pattern that seem to stick up a little bit higher. Uh, that kind of catches your attention. Uh, as you kind of contemplate that, though, uh, Cinder with a 27 in survival and Rad with a 24 in survival. Making sure I heard that correctly. Okay, cool. All right. Um, it was a listen for li us, uh, for Rad's. Rad, it was listen. Okay, my apologies. Thank you. Um, as uh, you listen in, Rad, listening to the sounds of the ice cracking in the background, the trees um, seemingly taking on this heavier and heavier snow, you'd expect to hear the sounds of anything pretty easily echoing through these woods, um, but it's almost as if the sound itself has been dampened, the whistling wind being the only thing that catches your attention other than your teammates' uh, very loud uh, and obnoxious uh, footprints kind of walk, or feet kind of crunching through the snow. Especially James, who seems to like walk into every rock and tree that can snap or move and crunch um, as he walks through the, uh, the trees. Um, very distracted by the fact that the ice birds still don't exist. Um. There are birds at home. Why aren't there birds here? Exactly. Cinder, um, with your 27, um, with the scent tracking, snow seems to pick up a, a trail. Um, noticing the very light uh, dips of a, what looks to be a couple of claw prints, it's as if these creatures are able to walk on the top of the snow almost unnaturally. Given the size of the uh, paw prints, you'd guess these creatures to be all adults, um, roughly. Um, as snow continues to follow, it's still too hard to tell to distinguish which one or how many tracks there are uh, but you'd gather between a lot of you minus james of course um you manage to guesstimate there's at least four separate uh creatures kind of walking about um through these path or through the snow uh leaving the smallest dips of their just their outer claws touching uh, dipping into the snow to mark the uh, unusual pattern 
Uh, but as snow begins to follow uh, the uh, scent, um, beginning to start kind of moving quicker, uh, he dot or he seems to glide across the snow as you lot follow after. Um, as you come to uh, about another half a day's uh, running, uh, kind of running through the snow to keep up with snow, um, everyone, give me fortitude checks, please. I know you're in cold weather clothing, um, however, this is prolonged uh, in the snow, running through it, uh, tired. I don't know if any of you have ever had to run through a blizzard, but it sucks. Yes, it's terrible. Is this purely for the cold? Uh, this is, is, yeah, this is, so Cinder, you won't have to roll for it. James, roll them in and red, I'd ask for in this case. Because James... I think my- James, pass, cool. James, you still pass with a ten, just but because because of the ten. I didn't know you had a high enough fortitude, but you do succeed. <laughs> Roll them in with ease. This is like training for you, honestly. Light warm up, you know. The the, the okay. heat from your body is easily 14. melting the snow coming off of you. Uh, Rad, as you're feeling a little bit of the chill in the wind, it's not great, but you're definitely um, getting accustomed to it as you're going, uh, as you're finding yourself having to kind of lightly almost hop on the snow to avoid sinking into it. Um, but between a lot of you, you manage to uh, kind of push through the blizzard uh, and the heavy snow that kind of picks up as you reach the edge of the forest, uh, continuing north um, through just open area um, as you see... Off to the distance to your left, prob- uh, you, what looks to be something kind of catches each of your eye as it's pretty cl- uh, heavily cleared out in this part of the, um, the northern shore. Um, a large, what looks to be almost rock-like object has been uh, that like sticks out of a very almost flat ground. Um, what looks to be originally a very forested area that you would have normally blocked area seems to have been completely cut down as the clear sides of stumps everywhere. Um, and what looks to be a small group, like village popping off far off in the distance around this rock as you see wood houses kind of uh, getting around it. Um, kind of catches your eye as it seems to stick out in this barren area. But as you continue uh, looking towards the north, snow continues to guide further and further uh, towards the uh, northern shores. Um, as you lot continue your uh, route there, or way there, about another two hours pass as you continue through the snow until you come upon what looks to be a strangely lightly snow-covered village. Uh, wood houses, um, sh- very light thatch roofs, um, a light snow skimming across all of the ground. Um, the houses themselves look to be completely blackened from their windows. Um, the few that have windows, uh, that is, as most of the buildings, as you look about, even from this distance, as you're about, uh, about a quarter of a mile away uh, from the village itself. However, again, it seems to stick out. The sounds of the water can be heard from the ocean um, coming from uh, the other side of what you'd guess is this uh, little uh, town. Um, as snow continues to kind of guide you towards it, uh, as kind of looking from this distance, nothing, no, nothing other than the building seems to stick out. No movement, no creatures, no nothing catches your attention upon an immediate inspection. What would you all like to do? Do the uh, yeah? Do the track still head towards the village? Uh, snow seems to continue to guide you that direction. Yes. I guess we head that way. Maybe the, uh, the villagers have seen something. I'm gonna cast a spell. Uh, just oh. to be safe, uh, I'm gonna cast Tojanita Sight. Okay. Uh, you still see the village there. It still looks like it's uh, kind of almost uh, empty, as there aren't any fires that you can see, no lights coming from there, no nothing catches your attention. Ah, oh, never mind, I thought this was a different spell. My apologies. Uh, I can see in all directions. I don't want to be flanked by something. <laughs> okay, all right. Um, as, yeah, as you begin, uh, as your eyes begin to glow, uh, kind of speaking a, uh, the druidic, uh, tongue, uh, you all watch as, uh, what looks to be eyes kind of up open on the sides and the back of, uh, Cinder's head. All right. Yes, Roman tree magic. <laughs> sure. Okay. Let's, uh, then let's going. go carefully, I guess. 
As oh. you start walking over towards the uh, the village following after snow. Um, as you come to the outskirts, uh, you get um, a general look of the uh, area. Um, and as you do, I'm going to post a little map of what you can roughly um, see and gather for as you get closer. Minus the trees in that map, of course, as there aren't any that are popping up. Um, you see as you see these buildings kind of plopped around this little air, this kind of small road that's almost as you notice the um, dusted snow uh, seems to kind of indent down into allowing for a clear view that there is some sort of change of uh, elevation between the dirt itself and the uh, what seems to be pathway in this town um, kind of looking about as you lot get closer even the sounds it's almost deafeningly silent other than the winds blowing and the heavy snows kind of coming down uh, all around you there's almost about a foot of snow built up but as you come into the village it's about almost two three inches that seem to have naturally built up around here uh the building or the roofs of the houses are covered heavily in the snow and it is almost awkwardly silent as you stand uh there snow kind of just looks up looks over at you lot and then just kind of looks back at the village uh and waits to see what you lot do how large are the buildings uh these look to be giant uh buildings so as you get or, uh, from what you can tell they look to be almost about uh 40 feet in height um, uh, for a single floor, and roughly about almost 60-ish feet in width uh, for the smaller houses. The larger ones are almost double that. Okay. I mean, I'm willing to go in and see what's going on. Mm-hmm. I'll start prodding around. Yeah. Potentially that these uh, series might be like some sort least... of shape changers. Yeah, we should probably stick in groups of at least two if we're going to prod around. What's the plan, then? I just look at Snow. Well, I'm already in a group, too. <laughs> Snow seems to yawn at that. Well, then, Uncle, wh where would you like to start? We'll... Or we can all start around here and just poke into different houses. It's probably for the best. We go to fourth and combat range to help each other. Uh, we're coming in from bottom left. From, uh, bottom left. Bottom okay. Left. Mm. We shouldn't do those two houses. Yeah. All right. We'll start with that. As you walk up to the wooden door, um, it is massive, uh, standing almost uh, twenty feet uh, in height uh, and about ten feet wide. Uh, as you kind of look up at it, Cinder. Uh, as you come up to the building, the logs on the side uh, that like hold up this building and kind of make up for it look like the person just cut down whole trees and stuck a roof onto it. Um, more a, a crude fort with a door as you look around it. But uh, funny enough, as um, you, lot are, you and James are short enough, um, there is a what looks to be almost a hole underneath the, um, the door it's between the frame that's about five feet uh, in gap um, that you're pretty sure, Cinder, you can almost comfortably fit under. I don't remember if your height's under five feet, but... I, I'm oh. under five feet, too. We could just walk they, uh, in. Um, I, I will say, looking in, it looks like there's some cloth kind of, like, pushed up against the, uh, on the inside um, to kind of, like, block the thing, but you're pretty sure looking at it, you could push that out of the way with ease. What was that, Roman? Go ahead, sorry. Uh, can I listen to see if, like, I hear any... Yeah, give me a listen check. I will listen. See what you got. 18. Uh, you here inside. Listen now, if you didn't get me the red flower like I asked, then you didn't do what I told you to. Uh, as you hear this in common being spoken by a very uh, kind of gruff sounding older uh, individual. Um... They almost sound, they sound like they have a light accent of giant in it, but not, it's just faint enough that you kind of catch it, that it seems kind of weird, as typically giant doesn't reflect into common very often, due to the common's ancestry of draconic. Um, you don't hear much okay. of an accent typically uh, mixed in there, um, amongst those who speak it, as he continues and goes, Alright, mustard, brown, black, and orange, you're gonna go back and get me those man, that man's flowers, 
And I want to know the truth behind it, because I guarantee the Regan has the truth behind the red flower. Oh. Which house is this from? Uh, the house you're standing in front of right now. Assumedly, your ear kind of pushed up against the door while uh, Cinder and James kind of look at the cloth and stare. And kind of, I imagine both a, a, la- a little bit of a light chuckle for them as well as a little sadness that they are tall or too short to uh, be like even hit the uh, door proper. Be impeded. Uh, it's an evolutionary uh, advantage. I can uh, easily yes. I, I hold up a finger to my mouth. That would be quiet. As you say this, uh, you do also notice Rad kind of standing off to the side, uh, watching you a lot as this goes on. Go ahead. I have a check for us to, to go in between the two houses, and we'll just wait and see for, watch, for people to come out. Okay. Cinder mm-hmm. so and James, are you just going to stay standing there? No, I'll uh, go to the no. house. We'll, we'll, we'll go and follow Roland's idea here. Okay. Uh, so are you going to the house on the left, or are you just going around to the front of the house? <coughs> like in between the two houses in the bottom just in of the between. left there. Okay. Yeah, as um, you two kind of start to circle uh, Cinder and James over to the left, um, Rad staying with uh, Roloman by the door, assumedly. I'm going there, too. Oh, you're going to follow? Okay. Oh, I'm, I'm saying, like, we're hiding oh. as a group. Okay, I got you, got you. My... Out. Got you. All right. Uh, Rad, are you going to hide with them, or are you going to just stand there as you watch them kind of skirt off to the side of the house? Just to make sure. Oh, you are on mute, just as a heads up. There you go. Uh, yeah, I will hide with okay. them. Okay, perfect. Uh, everyone give me a, um, a hide check, please. Oh, great, I gotta double check something. It's not move silently, you shouldn't be screwed because your armor. Uh, the armor gives negative to hide in. Oh, does it? Oh, never mind. Yeah. Yes, it does. The armor penalty is to, like all physical things, all physical yeah. skill checks. Don't worry, Uncle Cinder got a twenty-one. <laughs> I was say, in theory, I guess you'd have to fu- you'll have to come up with another one here. It wouldn't do it well, but if there was mud or something like that, I could see how you could cover up the uh, the glimmer of your armor. But snow is kind of doesn't really do much for the glimmer. Eighteen for Roman. Can, Roman, I, can Cinder- I just bury myself? <laughs> uh, there's only no, like that's, three that's inches of snow. Um. I don't think you're that short. Um, unless you want to dive back outside of the town uh, where there seems to be mysteriously almost a few, uh, uh, a foot of snow kind of piling up in a ring. No, no thanks. I'll... Okay. I'll... And give me a hide check. 23. I gotta go double check and make sure I have the right minus to it. You're good. Don't worry. Snow is invisible. Snow, it just vanishes into the bushes. Cool. That's what they're supposed to do. They're, they're head white for, for a reason. There, were, there weren't there bushes there before, but they just magically appear and vanish into them. No, it's just that good. Yep. 31. 31. Uh, Rad sees the, the bushes and follows suit. Becomes a bush. Those are yep. good bushes. Yep. Well, I mean, snow's in there. Who doesn't want to you know, fall out next to a go. cat that's warm? Oh, okay. James, yes. Uh, I got a minus six on this on top of whatever whatever plus I have, so this is gonna be a minus because I think that's gonna be. Please get uh, a nat or negative two. Uh, I can't. I actually physically can't get a negative two. Oh, that's good. Hasn't stopped people before though. What kind of low number are we? About actually, to wait. No. Yes, I can. Shit. That's a nine though. Okay. Um, James, as you, uh, and, uh, the rest of your part kind of, uh, as Cinder, James, and Roman go off to the left side of the house, uh, Ran and the, uh, the, and Snow off to the, uh, the other side, kind of skinny, skirting into some bushes, um, the doors begin to open as they do, um, and I'm just going to have them... Uh, six, 20 plus this, and I'll just add that modifier on top of it. Okay. Um, the creatures kind of one after another begin to head out. You see as, um, a group of five, uh, smile or smilodons or saber tooth tigers with a bit more armor, uh, plating on their back. Um, kind of these large chunks of, uh, 
almost um, skin that had kind of built up like a shell, like uh, almost almost similar to an armadillo. Um, these, as they start to pass by or through the door, as they tear it open, pulling it back, um, and begin to walk out, you see as a five orange furred ones kind of walk off, um, and gruffly heading in one direction, five more black furred ones kind of walk in another, another five brown furred, and finally a last uh, five of a mustard furred group. Um, as the 20 creatures uh, kind of one by one find themselves heading off in different directions as little packs. Um, <laughs> it's a big house. Uh, the uh, You see for a moment, or rather hear the sounds of something still moving around inside as the wood it sound creaks loudly as the creature uh, inside seems to step around. Um, the door shuts again once the last of the mustard fur uh, leaves. Um, a large shadow kind of uh, seemingly poking out for only a moment um, into the light, seeing a darkened, large, furry paw um, vanish into the darkness. Sorry, not large. Um, gar- uh, yeah, gargantuan's the next. No, uh, huge, huge. Ugh. Going up in my uh, my list here. It is not a clown car. Uh, not at all. <laughs> uh, I will write in the snow a question mark to James. I'm not saying anything. You'll get a shrug in response. Give me a move silently check for that roll. <laughs> for, for me writing in snow? Yep. Okay. I mean, are you just using your finger? Are you using a stick you find? You know? You using fingers. the end of your stabbing? You using your sword? No. no. He's violently no. stabbing the ground, making it rumble yes. as you do. Fine. As you very loud, very loud snow. As you kind of like white right into the snow, um, moving it about, not really trying to hide the sound as you do so. Um, watch as he kind of writes in. It doesn't make much noise uh, other than the light cracking of the snow. That's though seems to almost sound like a uh, the loudest uh, sound you've ever heard before James in the current situation due to the silence from the, uh, the otherwise snow and wind um, remarkably uh, snow and cinder as well as rad do not hear it <laughs> true and, and oh, I just mean I'd just like to point my staff in the direction one of the creatures, uh, like one of the groups went, and just stare at the others. Did they all, like, all the groups going off in different directions, right? Uh, yes. Um, all, uh, two of them went, or one of them went east, one went west, one went south, and then another went also south. Which one left right. last? The We're mustard, probably not going to go south. The mustard-furred one that went south. Fuck. Okay, so we should go for the first one, then. Or uh, wherever Cinder is pointing, we'll go there. Where which way is Cinder there? pointing? That's up to DM. I didn't specify what group I pointed at. That's true. I point, presumably it'd be the one How I saw. How about you just roll a four? I was like, presumably it's the one I could see most clearly walking away from the direct, where we're sitting. Uh, yeah, I mean, assumedly, so it'd be the last one, because um, that would be the, uh, the slowest of the groups. Um, yeah, as, uh, you kind of head, or point over towards the mustard fern ones that seem to be kind of starting to head off into the southern, uh, tree, or towards the southern tree line, um, still far away, uh, in the distance for the tree line, but the creature's kind of heading that way openly. Uh, there, I will say, to the south of you is an open field for a good few hours worth of marching, um, so these creatures, you're pretty sure if you take on one group, they're gonna, all the rest are more than likely going to hear or see the kerfuffle. Did any go into the woods, uh, or the direction of the woods? The wood, yes, they did. But again, the woods are a few hours march from here. Yeah. So it's Boy, just yeah. we could also go inside the building and try and gank their leader. Or we could just talk to him. Jeez, dude. This is immediately resorting to murder. If we want to follow from a distance, I have a spell for that. How far is I the have... distance? Unlimited. Well, 
as as long as I have contact with one plant, I can see through any other plant anywhere that's the same kind of plant. Well, to be fair, it's field. Are there plants in the field? Uh, no, there's about a foot of snow, though. I, I mean, we could... I guess we could talk to the person indoors. And figure out what's going on and try and get him to curb the saber tooth activity in the area. Let's wait a little bit so that uh, the groups aren't too too close, though. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll just sit here for like, I don't know, an hour? Okay. Uh, give me a search. Uh, if you're actively like on alert, give me a search check. If you don't, if you're not, give me a spot check. I'll be doing a spot check. For an eighteen. Okay. Sixteen search. Mm -hmm. Let's see. What's my spot? Okay. As you kind of begin to sit there, uh, and Red, let me know once you, if you're rolling in the background, take your time. Um, as you begin to sit there, the snow falling, the wind kind of blowing past you. Roll them in. I mean, your eyes kind of focused in on the, uh, the, the, the doorway itself, expecting it to open at any time as you look on. Uh, kind of keeping your eyes back towards the open, snowy fields, seeing the uh, clear signs of the creatures kind of pushing in, uh, through the snow as some of it collapses in the areas where you can't see the creatures as the snow is too high. Um, but as you kind of watch, nothing kind of catches your attention. Um, James, as you look on... Nothing seems to catch your eye. The doorway stays shut. It's almost quiet. The snow in the distance kind of collapses every once in a while, catching your eye um, as it does, though. But as you kind of realize it's one of the creatures disappearing off into the distance, you go back to focusing on the door once again. Your heart in your throat as the heavy snow comes down and the icy winds continue to push past, whistling as they do naturally through the town. The sounds of uh, the heavy footprints, uh, heavy weight kind of pushing down on the inside of the uh, house as it does so. Uh, Cinder, as you're kind of sitting there next to James and Roloman on the side of the house, uh, Snow and Rad on the other side uh, in some bushes, you feel something kind of he uh, like warm and feel something heavy lay down behind you. As it, something can, begins to breathe on you. I can see behind me because of the spell. As you look behind you, give uh, with that check, you uh, do you see a huge Smilodon with one very bright purple fang and the other looking to be a greenish colored uh, a large fang staring at you and smiling. If a smile, if a, a saber tooth could smile. As My you dare. Huh? They come as animals, right? Yes. Uh, well, let me double check. Uh, yes, they do. I have, I have to know because for a thing I'm about to do. Yes, they um, do. Well, I have wild empathy for a reason. <laughs> okay. I'd like to. I'm like friends. To, I'm going to try to pet the creature to make it my friend. You're going to cast wild <laughs> empathy on yourself? Uh, it's not wild a spell. A skill. Oh, is it a skill? It's just a can do to make animals like them. Mm -hmm. Alright, let me double check something. It's got DCs and stuff. Ah, oh, it's a diplomacy, okay. Uh, diplomacy for animals, yeah. Is, does this thing have intelligence? Is it yes, this does. Interesting. Alright. I think that honestly works even better than what I was originally going to do. Alright. Right. Uh, twenty-two. Uh, as what are you trying to do exactly? I slowly turn to the creature, 
hands shown, so they're not like not reaching for anything. And using this wild empathy, I'm gonna slowly try to pet the creature. Uh, as you reach your hand out uh, to pet the creature, it snorts at you and goes, huh, "Wild empathy. You too train in the wild magics." Oh, as uh, so suddenly, cool. uh, Roloman and James, you hear behind you something speaking in Druidic, and then as you turn to look, see this huge, uh, twenty foot uh, tall and uh, about fifteen foot long um, Smilodon staring down at you with its big golden eyes uh, and two massive fangs, one uh, being a purple coloration, the other being greenish in color. I'd like to put a hand towards the other two to just wait for a second. I'll give my uncle a thumbs up. Good to meet a fellow druid. What you doing here? I was gonna eat ya. I mean, you did decide to stake outside my house. By the way, I could smell you as soon as you came here. You're really not bad. And the shiny one here, as it like points a claw over towards James and lightly taps James's armor. Uh, again, speaking in druidic, James, I don't know if you know druidic, so you just hear this creature no, kind of roaring. I don't. Uh, as it lightly well, I hear, taps your leaf, leaf tree branch. Yeah. <laughs> you have to, you have to be a druid to know druidic. You can't. Oh, or you, it. or cast a comprehension spell of some kind. It, it taps you on the armor, James. You feel the claw kind of lightly piercing into the armor as it does so. Uh, as it seems to, and pull, it puts its paw back down onto the ground and goes, I, uh, you know, I could have had you swallowed up by the grounds around here, and it would have been just as easy. What are you, uh, what are you all doing in my, uh, domicile? Uh, the, uh, the large ones nearby were concerned that you're, uh, you, well, all of you suddenly showed up, wanted to know what was going on. They better fucking be so. One of their best, one of them sent a few months back, probably actually a year now, killed a friend, a good friend of mine, a man who fed, who fed us and took care of us, stole his booze and then let, and let the damn fucking werebear walk off with everything. Friend of yours? Who? Uh, Snowbeard. He was a lycanthrope fellow. Good, good man. Took care of the travelers and took care of the animals and unfortunately got himself turned. Made himself mm. even more of a, a savior for the area. And then some giants came down and started beating on him. They had tan skin. Ugly bastards. You said tan skin? Yes. Mm. Those those aren't the natives. Mm. Outsiders. One, one of them smelled like their, their leader. Eh, could have spent some time in the area point is they're not the species of the natives don't matter i saw him coming down from the mountain i know the truth i eat a lot smell just like them now what do you want i mean just that wanted to know what was going on uh huh i'm gonna kill the regan himself that he claims to be whatever this regan thing is and then I'm going to watch as his pack flees off into the wilds. How, how big is your pack, person to person? Oh, I command multiple herds. Why? Ah, uh, as a fellow druid, I'm comparing your odds. His pack is very large. He will not compare to old Big Tooth. His pack is, uh, I think. Hundreds of thousands, maybe. I don't understand that those numbers. Uh, um, the group that left, twenty, right? The the four groups. And odds. Think of that, but many, many, many times. Big. Think of this village as people, but many copies of this village. Yeah, it's just people. There was no one here. Uh, I I meant you and the other uh, saber tooths that were here. Mm. He kind of nods at that, and you see his uh, his brows kind of furrow slightly. Uh, this Regan creature is uh, impressive. I think I will have to continue to grow my pact if that's the case. But you lot, you lot would be a s smell like him and would be a good reason to kill to leave him with a deadly blow. We're not, we're not tied to his pack, but 
And it like stands up and breathes a bit heavier as you see the steam coming out of his mouth and a bit saliva dripping onto the snow and goes, again, Rollman and James having no idea what is being discussed as you see Cinder trying to keep this creature calm. All um, I'm doing James is, is, is waiting. Uh, mm-hmm. Is saying how, like, how scary is this creature? Like, how strong is it? Uh, like give me a, a profession from. soldier or mercenary role for you. And I'd be trying to see how much magic it has because it's definitely magical uh, it is a druid you can give me a uh, spellcraft or you can give me a knowledge arcana could i give swap out wisdom for i'm on knowledge for spellcraft yeah uh no i guess i'll go spellcraft you gotta be smart i got a seven seven okay um 14 <laughs> He, the creature looks like it's definitely threatening, uh, Rollman. You're just unsure how capable it's, it is a big creature. And as you just saw, the other ones were smaller. You'd guess it's probably more capable than the average. But you did cut, yet uh, Yum Yam Hammerpaw down in like two hits, so. After it got smashed in the face by James. Although I will say, uh, Yum Yam was about, was large. This creature is huge and looks to be much older from what you can tell. Uh, Mm -hmm. His uh, fur is a bit more grizzled. And as you look down the side of him, you can see a bit more scars. Uh, His belly looks to have a big patch that's missing fur altogether. Um, And it looks like he's gone through it. But beyond that, I mean, it's a grizzled cat. Um, You're you're pretty sure you've got a good chance against it, uh, looking it up and down. Um... James, as you look at the creature, uh, you're pretty sure this is, creature can cast. As you notice, a few spell area or a few areas where the flesh on its body looks to have been mended uh, with what looks to be some sort of um, material like leather and other bits. Um, there also, as you notice, are small flowers kind of growing out of the top of its back that seem to just have the lightest bit of color uh, that kind of catch your attention. You'd guesstimate this individual is probably somewhere around a fourth level druid, potentially. All right. There's um, no way we can come to an accord for you to let us leave. The creature looks at you and goes, You've entered my hunting grounds. I and cast you... Winning Sphere. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, let me check something. Oh, I had the year. <laughs> That's true. Don't let them finish if they're not going to say yes. I'm I just... may as well get a jump on him, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, if I notice my own can, cast. but I will require an initiative roll as he does have a feat that makes it so you can't just get a surprise on him. Mm. Is this all wrong initiative then? Yes, please do. Uh, I would have preferred to end it peacefully, but he didn't want There's it. No peace. No peace. I never was. I tried peace. peace. I never want peace. I will uh, go into a frenzy Ooh. for adrenaline fueled. Ouch! Oh, yep. <laughs> Alright, 19 for Cinder, 17 for James. Red, if you wouldn't mind rolling initiative and let me know what you get. Not, you know, I like the, the enemy caster <laughs> in dealing with each other. I'm going to take a wild guess here and say that Rollaman has a higher dex than James. Oh, uh, never mind, yeah. 27. Yeah, I think you said 17. Uh, also the head. No, 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 I said 27. My apologies. Uh, Rad got 17. Oh, fuck me. All right. Rad has a higher dex than me. I don't question that. No, I know he does. Uh, Because I know his class. All right, at the top of the initiative. uh, But since you did succeed in it, Cinder, you do get your first round off. Go ahead. Okay. He gets a surprise round. About to set this poor thing on fire. Please don't. I uh, burn. Oh, it's a here. I need a reflex save. A reflex save? Oh, I'm good at those. I hope the cat is good. Reflex. That's an 18. Uh, 
you pass by one. As a uh, big tooth, old big tooth jumps or moves his paw or uh, his paw away as the fiery sphere goes flying past it, uh, kind of hitting into the side of the building as it does, um, catching it on fire as it pulls so, back. It doesn't do damage. However, I do bring it back to rest in front of me, so now I have a, a physical barrier because it's physical fire, not like yep. it's described as spongy feeling. Okay. Uh, I know the barrier. Perfect. As you kind of keep the uh, the fire uh, the fiery sphere in front of you, the building on the side lightly beginning to uh, burn um, as you do. Um, roll them in. We go to the top of the initiative. Um, what would you like to do? All right. Is there any way I can get around the bucket, the plank with the uh, cinder here? Um, it's so the the gap between is about twenty feet in width. Uh, I would assume cinder's not uh, cinder's fire sphere is not twenty feet in width. No, it's like five because it yeah. feels like a square. Uh, so yeah, easily you can get onto the side of uh, um, Cinder instead and uh, uh, fight the creature. Ooh, well, I will use uh, a swift action to use uh, blah, blah, blah. aim of the Horizon Walker to move half my speed. Okay. Without improving attack opportunity to get to the side for a flanking bonus. Okay. Uh, as a free action, can I taunt this thing? Oh, uh, what are you going to try and say? You're the, uh, probably the most dangerous here. Do you know of Lord Yum Yum? He went down easy. I hope you give a better fight for me. And, uh, I'll say that in common, since I, I assume, uh, I'm just going to say in common. Hoping the creature understand. All right, as you say yeah. this on the side of the creature, uh, it doesn't seem to respond immediately, but go ahead and roll what you'd like to do. All right, I will use a full round action to deliver a a decisive strike with the comma. So this will be mm -hmm. comma. We roll. Believe this is correct. 21 to hit? That's terrible. 21 to hit? Uh, does hit. Nice. Okay. So this will do uh, double damage. Oh, no. Let's see what you got. Fuck him up. As you Fuck pull out your, your bastard sword and get ready to swing. Oh, this is the comma. Oh, this is the comma. Oh. The, the little fucking hand scythe. The hand <laughs> yeah, scythe. The hand scythe. All right, as you pull out your little hand scythe, uh, kind of looking, going into the side of the creature, let's see what you got. The hand scythe that drinks blood, mind you. Uh -huh. 28 uh -huh. damage. 28? Uh, yes, 28 damage. Magical piercing? Uh, Slashing. Okay. But it's magical. 28, so that is... Give me a second. So it would go through a uh, magical armor reduction. Yep. Uh, the cre as you stab into the creature, it yelps out um, as you do. Uh, the comic kind of tearing at its side um, as it pulls through. Um, the uh, old tooth, a big tooth, kind of screeches out and roars at you as uh, he turns his head towards you. Uh, you got his attention now. Mm -hmm. Come at me, beast, and uh, I will take a stance that leaves me open to being hit. Okay. On purpose. All right. Uh, are you ending your turn with that? Yes. All right. As you kind of hold, get yourself set in almost a catcher's uh, stance, waiting for the creature to smack you, looking at it, waiting. Um, all right. Cinder, jumping over to you with your fiery sphere still in, uh, uh, in front of you. You saw as Roman kind of ran down the side of the alleyway to disappear into the side of the creature as it turns as it's, it's turned its head after roaring out uh, the clear uh, sign of what or the sounds of blood dropping onto the sand or sand onto the snow uh, can be kind of heard uh, and as well as at your height seeing, um, seeing being able to see Roman and underneath the large creature. Well, seeing as how with that thing saves, it's probably not going to help. I'm just going to get the sphere out of the way. Um... Because I can free move at 30 feet every round. Okay. And I'm going to shoot uh, this creature with a splinter bolt. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to make a ranged attack. 
And to make clear, so wait, you're uncasting the fiery sphere? Sorry. Um, I'm just moving it because I think it, drop the spell requires actual work. So it does. It's, it's a it's it a move. A yeah. yeah. Oh, if it has a D on it, you can drop it at any time, pretty sure. But otherwise, yeah. Yeah, because D is drop it will, but otherwise you have to use a um, yeah. you have to yeah, use yeah, an yeah. action. Mm -hmm. uh, all right, no worries. If you're just gonna put it behind your group uh, to uh, well, ensure you don't get smacked in the back. It is D, but if I keep the spell, I can use it later, so I can just push it out of the way. Okay. Uh, I think that's almost certainly a hit, but I have to see how high that is. Uh, seventeen plus. Uh, 22 to hit. 22 does hit. All right. Is that a crit? No, it's one away from a crit. Damn. Bad. It's a sad day. Uh, this thing does a lot of damage for its spell level. It's a sad day after all. As I start shooting sharp chunks of wood into the creature. Oh, yeah. As almost little splinters and sticks that seem to pull out from the ground, roots that seem to tear away, start shooting up from the ground into the creature, stabbing into it left and right as it roars back, its head turning back over towards Cinder, glaring at Cinder. Uh, at 16 points, all right. You should have let me leave, as I'll cast it again. <laughs> uh, didn't it take, does it not take an action to move the fire sphere? Um, I think it does. It might be a move action or a swift action. If it's a swift action, you can still attack. Yeah. Um, sphere. A move spells. action for you. It is a move. Yeah. So next turn will do it. So, <laughs> base. As the the wood chunks kind of stick out of the creature, roaring at you, blood kind of coming out of its mouth as it does. Um, as you all look back for a moment, um. Give me, uh, everyone other than, uh, Rollman who can't see it, uh, give me spot checks real quick. I can't see. Okay. 25. <laughs> I wish that would have waited. <laughs> that 20 would have been so good. Right. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> All right. Actually, Cinder, uh, since we haven't moved on as well, make sure you're ready with Snow's uh, actions as well while you're looking at Oh, dude, Snow is easy to run. It just jumps the creature. <laughs> uh, and pounce, then... pounce. Rad 20. Uh, you all notice there uh, the Smilodon packs that had left have begun to turn around and start running back, it looks like, but they are distant. Um, as oh, you can start to see the snow collapsing in on them. Uh, yep, as uh, we jump over to Rad's turn, you're up. As you stand about ten... Oh, you're not doing... Uh... Oh, sorry, Snow. The, yes, the... thank you. Yep, I left her. Yeah. All right, time for five <laughs> attacks. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Get him! Get his yeah. ass! 24 to hit. Uh, 24 does hit. D6 plus 4, 6 damage for the first. Okay. <laughs> 4 claw attack. Although I don't know if these will hit because they have a very low hit modifier. Uh, the first is a 10. 10 does not hit. A 17. Uh, just barely <laughs> hits. Okay, sick. 5 damage. Five damage as snow tears into the face of sweet old big tooth. Go ahead. Yep. Uh, eighteen to hit. Eighteen hits. And sixteen. Probably Does not hit. One. Yep. Uh, four more damage. All right. As you. As Snow leaps into action, kind of jumping from the bushes, gra grabbing onto the creature's face and tearing, clawing at it, uh, you watch a snare pull. Uh, snare Snow pulls away uh, with a chunk of its eyebrow in its mouth, landing on the ground next to you, Cinder, and looking up at the creature as it licks its lips, uh, kind of licking away the blood. Good work, boy. Snow seems to kind of yawn slightly at that, and then stares back up at the creature. All right. As it ends its turn, Rad, you are up. Okay, so I'm going to... Uh, how... 
how far away does the pack look? Uh, looks to be about an hour. Um, at their movement speed at a full run, that puts them... Let's see. Uh, they're 60 seconds in a minute, so that's 10 rounds. Uh, it's 100 rounds. Okay, so 100. Give me a second. I have to do math. Times, what's 40 times 4? That's 120. They are roughly about 100, or sorry, 12,000 feet away from you currently. Okay. To be exact. <laughs> right on. About two miles away. Huh? <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, I'm not going to try and do that in mileage this time. I learned my lesson trying to calculate yeah, yeah, yeah. that. So it's just here's yeah. feet. Word. Uh, okay. Rad. He's still in a bush mm -hmm. uh, that, what, the snow leopard just jumped out of. Mm -hmm. But he's, uh, like, maybe not mechanically hidden, but is he obscured? Uh, you are still uh, like, under You are still under full uh, concealment. The creature has not noticed you. Okay. Uh, you and gotcha, Snow gotcha. both succeeded your checks earlier. The only people who failed were um, James, Cinder, and Rollman. That's uh, why the creature appeared behind them suddenly. <laughs> I'm not perfect. made to be sneaky. I'm made to be stanky. <laughs> you stanky? Okay, yeah. I'm gonna keep that in mind. <laughs> Super tanky. Oh. Stanky. That's not no. <laughs> That's so <not> stanky. <laughs> means. means your ass smells. <laughs> we did sleep in the wild for the first time in a long time. <laughs> Uh, okay. Alright, for that I thing, everyone's gonna have my... to give me a fortitude save in the background, because apparently James stinks ah. so bad. Alright, no fortitude. I feel, I'd like to motion we're immune due to the, uh, the troll ass leather. <laughs> Unfortunately, oh, wait, I do that's still that. in I his, uh, that. bag of holding. Oh, shut up. <laughs> um, no, Rollman, I'm sorry. Uh, that's, uh, unfortunately, still gotta roll. All right. Sixteen. Okay, that's a success. You're fine, Rollman. Cinder's fine with a twenty-five. Give Rad a second to you know roll. Oh, don't forget about doing snows, uh, Cinder. Oh, I, do leopards have a high fortitude? <laughs> oh, yeah, they do. <laughs> Okay, okay, you got an 18. Alright, that's okay. succeed, okay. Oh. Uh, 16. 16 succeeds. Alright, no one fails, but the scent of James on the air is enough to catch all of your attentions. Even during the uh, current situation. Right, apparently he shit his pants. <laughs> suddenly, suddenly the scent hits you. Even uh, Roland, who's over on the side of the creature, away from James, just starts smelling James and immediately knows it's James. Does the saber tooth seem fine? Uh, the saber tooth looks unbothered. Mm. <laughs> okay. I did roll twice. Uh, so. Go ahead. Yes, right. I here. will say while there is no mechanical uh, aspect to this stink, mm -hmm. the air starts to stink of sulfur and brimstone around me as well. <laughs> <laughs> Look at your pants too. <laughs> oh no. Uh. <laughs> As my body starts to snap and crack, bones start to extend out of my back, uh, and I look like a weird, disgusting bird porcupine. <laughs> uh, and then a smiling like sharp toothed mouth opens in my hand uh and a blade uh made entirely of jagged teeth extends out a three foot long blade extends out of my hand uh I know these spells. and i stay crouched in this bush because that's my turn <laughs> oh okay <laughs> 
as the these crackling. sounds of the snapping, snapping and crackling behind this bush as you all are kind of distracted by the scent of James and now the smell of sulfur kind of on the air catching on to make it even more acidic like James just shat himself basically and is literally cooking diamonds down below. <laughs> um, the sounds of crackling and flesh melding and ripping doesn't help as you kind of catch this smell. Um, as all of you are kind of left to look back at James and wonder if there's something like worse going on for a moment. <laughs> uh, James, as you're up, you're unsure of yourself as you even hear these sounds of the crackling and such as you kind of look down at yourself, checking your body to make sure no one just put a hole in you or anything. Last time I heard noises like that, I got my bones drank. Come on. <laughs> it's true, actually, in fact. <laughs> and as you kind of suddenly remember, you recognize the sound as you look back looking for a bone drinker. <laughs> Um, but no, no, I'll pop elation. Okay. So we'll my allies get a plus two bonus, morale bonus to their strength and dex and gain five more feet of speed. Everybody within 80 feet gets that. Okay. Oh, fast. Interesting. I make everyone go burr. Okay. For my allies. And then, uh, I guess I'll... Has to spell this time. Kelgor's firebolt for my second action. As you just like casually look through your book and then sigh and summon up a small firebolt in your hand, <laughs> uh, aiming at the uh, creature as I don't have a book. Remember, I'm a fucking cleric. I have this shit memorized. I'm like, oh holy uh, fuck! I guess I'll do this. I I don't oh, know about you, but I've never seen a priest without a holy book. So um, I a holy symbol. Yeah, I, I, yeah, it's my holy symbol. I don't have a book. Listen, with the amount of times you've had to go back and look up a spell, you carry a holy book to keep your spell notes in. Don't you can't tell me otherwise for James. Well, notes that kind of fall out every few times, every time he opens it, like, like no, don't use not, this. I, it's, I don't have a book. I have a bunch of folded paper. <laughs> oh God. Um, but as you cast, you go ahead and roll to attack. Uh, okay, and I this is plus my wisdom modifier to hit because Kelgor's firebolt is a touch. Okay. Double check that so I don't things up. Uh, da -da -da -da. There it is, and yep, it is a touch. Okay. Spell. No spells be that good. Touch me, come here. Let's go. <laughs> Roll to confirm, I'm please. I'm looking. This is on fire. Roll the twenty button. Roll to confirm, my friend. Let's see what you got. Okay. Uh, as the uh, the fireboat goes to the right and where the fire sphere had already kind of ignited the little house on your right, the house begins to almost immediately uh, light up as the firebolt catches a lo uh, bit of pitch from one of the uh, the logs. Uh, almost immediately engulfing it, all of you begin to smell the smoke kind of as the blackened smoke kind of begins to pile off of the, uh, the house. Totally meant to do that. <laughs> As James ends his turn, like looking up at the the house on fire. <laughs> what was that, Roman? Sorry. Of course, of course. Yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, sweet old Big Tooth is up, and immediately uh, he is going to cast out to gust of wind. I need a fortitude save from all y'all. I am to the side. Okay. Do I have to? Ah, uh, you do not, Roman. You are also correct. you cast a spell. Uh, yes, it does. The oh. creature. Yes. I'm going to attack opportunity because. Oh, God. A spell in melee, uh, you can attack opportunity. Also, I, we get the bonus against spells to this. This is great. You do. Make sure I have that bonus. So, this first one is the Bastard Sword. 18, bro. 18 to hit. Uh, now that it's not its uh, fucking flat footed AC, no, you don't hit. <laughs> Sad. Right. No, you don't hit, Cinder. Fuck you. <laughs> oh, no, shit. James hit. Oh, that was a no, save? A save. Oh. <laughs> you're a save. Six hit. Oh. A comma. That, I mean, if I... That hits. <laughs> God damn it. If I'm getting a free swing, I, I'll swing no. with my hammer. No, 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 no. <laughs> I'll probably fucking miss and be a disappointment again, but, you know, I'll swing. No, you're good. Uh, the 29 saves. Uh, Cinder, the 24... Um... That's you do save. Damage, by the you way. do save. 11. Oh, how is it 22? Wait, what? Oh, the decisive strike. Is, I have double damage on all my attacks from the uh, rest of the round. Okay. Okay. No worries. 
And also, I believe you have to make a concentration check to make sure you don't lose your spell. Yeah, fuck you. Oh, <laughs> uh, you know, it's... Little well, it, I in front of him, but just a distraction. <laughs> just... One thing I'm confident in, now I say this before I roll this, is that I actually can succeed. Yeah. All right. With ease. All right. Uh, so, Cinder, you do succeed. Uh... James, you succeed, and Rad, because you will still be hitting this because this is a uh, shaped, like a like a cone effect, um, please do also give me the Fortitude save. Uh, as none of I you... I apologize for it. For, yeah, Fortitude, correct. Gotcha. Ooh, 23. All right. Uh, as uh, you also succeed, the f spell fails. All right. Uh, he is going to cast a second spell on himself. Uh, and immediately... You cast again? Huh? You cast again? Yes. Oh, no. Uh, whatever. Yeah, yes. Because this does go off okay. before... This does technically go off before you get to attack. So, okay, perfect. Want to make sure. Ooh. With the Basso Sword, 27 to hit? Um, that does not hit any longer. Oh, okay. Uh, as the creature's AC increases... 32 to hit with the Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna bully you in a minute here. <laughs> we'll have to be. I'll take it. Uh, uh, 26 damage. 26 damage, okay. Um, all right, as you smack into, or as you tear into the side of the creature again, more blood kind of splaying all into your face, or onto your face as the creature roars out on its side. You gotta do your concentration, by the way. Make sure you, don't lose your spell. Uh, you know what's funny? I don't have to do the concentration for it because the spell technically goes off before the attack of opportunity goes off. That's why my AC increased, motherfucker. So fuck you. All right. Oh, okay. Uh, he used mage armor. I'm gonna dispel no, that. No, I didn't. I'd use a different. I don't. Ha what druid has mage armor? <laughs> Please explain to that. Like this. To me. Uh, god damn. All right. Uh, the, do I have anything Miss else? Huh? With bark. Maybe. Skin. <laughs> I also have bark skin. Let's have a bark skin fight. Uh, <laughs> let me see. I'm just double checking something. That is which my two I do spells. That's a visual thing that. Uh, as the cr as the creature ends, it, uh, which I did describe before I got uh, before Rylan attacked me. If you weren't listening, that's yeah. on you. Um, I, I heard it. I was just being excited. All right. As the uh, as sweet old Big Tooth uh, sta uh turns his skin to a barkish coloration. Uh, he ends his turn. Um, go ahead, roll him in at the top of the initiative. You are up. It's my turn. All right, uh, double damage is no longer in effect because it's the start of my turn now. Okay. So now, now I do normal damage. Oh, uh, here, actually, just for the note for the those wondering, because uh, this will be tracking-wise. Uh, we're at 11,888, or uh, 880 oh. feet before the uh, other thing you get back. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, I will use a immediate action to go invisible. Okay. So I can see a plus two, and also it is on your uh, flat-footed, I believe, for AC. Uh, mm. I do need to roll something real quick. Um, this counts as plus. It's okay. Uh, can I get you to do a hide check uh, or something? Because uh, I need a roll for it. Because technically, this creature can spot uh, creatures that go invisible through scent. Through scent, but that'd be a blind sense if I remember correctly. Correct. Yeah. That doesn't help with the advantage. You'll know that the square I am in, but I still get the uh, the bonus. bonus? Okay. The cool. Okay. One make sure. All right. Perfect. I will. I will roll that just yeah. so you can just see, see if the creature does notice you or not. Yeah. So uh, stealth gives you plus ten, right? Uh. If you're invisible. Yes, I believe so. I think it's a, for invisible. It's plus ten to move silent and hide. Yeah. Twenty nine. Oh yeah. Okay. Uh. If you were invisible and you were immobile, you get a plus 40 to hide checks or a plus 20. Oh, oh well, yeah, you oh, usually succeed then. Okay, yeah. Um, we don't need to add to that roll. We're good. Okay. All right, so I'm going to attack 
Uh, with the decisive strike again. Oh, God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> so that is a plus a bigger number. No. Oh, man. That's terrible. <laughs> 22 to hit. Uh, that does not hit. Thank God. It is against your flat foot, though. Oh, it is against my flat foot, which does, does my... Let me double check. I don't think this counts towards flat footed. Uh, flat footed is it, natural. It, natural. it does, it which is, is flat footed, so that would bump me up to eight. No, that's not enough. Fuck. <laughs> so it does hit. Wrong button there. That hurts. Uh, Thirty damage. Thirty. Fuck. Uh, as it as you tear into the creature's side again, fur kind of dropping, blood splattering everywhere, muscle kind of giving way as it does. Uh, the creature coughs blood heavily onto um, Cinder and James as they're covered in it, as the creature uh, seems to be now bleeding out of its mouth uh, heavily, um, almost in a look of shock. That's my turn. That's your turn? Could have been peaceful. Yes. All right, I'm shocked. That, that, that so is the creature as it takes a second expecting another hit. Just to do that. Oh, okay. Uh, Cinder, as you're up, what would you like to do? As you just hear these sounds of cutting of a cutting blade into meat, uh, almost as if you're standing in the, a butcher shop. Everyone, I have waited until this session to finally use this spell. I cast a boob. <laughs> haboob. Uh, you know what special again, quality know immune to haboob no go ahead <laughs> no that's so mean no go ahead explain yeah i need a reflex save as the uh the snow starts picking up and running into creatures to stab them <laughs> oh, oh no oh my reflex is at least increased from this oh you'll probably succeed but this 25? is 25 yeah, you succeed. There's going to be constant damage you're going to be taking every round. No. Yes. Yeah. I don't like this. Don't worry, on. the first one's not going to hurt Whoa. bad. Yeah, that's before the hazard. What gonna... kind of damage is that? Uh, this is... Is it, uh, is it cold specifically? No, this is not a cold spell. Oh, is it just magic piercing then? I think so. Yeah, from the looks this of it. Is... Yeah. Okay. Watch your right? No, piercing. No, it, it's flensing. It, it's cutting. Flensing, damn. Oh, I've never heard of that. Okay. Uh, all right, yeah. Um, seven points. Okay. As you shoot this, uh, the, uh, this note kind of jumping up at the creature from the ground, stabbing in and tearing at the creature, slashing and uh, cutting little uh, slices into its belly, the creature roars out. Um, though no significant amounts of blood are kind of dropped, um, the creature seems to be more annoyed by the pest in its side. I ran the flaming spear into it again. <laughs> Fuck you. Insult injury right there. Mmm, <laughs> bad. Uh, is that a reflex or a fortitude save? Yeah, it's reflex. It's reflex. The reflexive cat. Fuck me. Oh, shit. Uh, <laughs> not this uh, time. Uh, yeah, 14? Um. Fail. <laughs> no. No, no, no. no. This isn't gonna hurt as bad as you think it does. I hope not. It's just fire damage. It's, it's just, just fire. fire. Damage. Look, it's just a little bit of fire. It doesn't do that much damage. It's fine. Yeah. Yeah. See, look. Yeah. See. As the, the fire sphere rushes into the creature, igniting the little like sticks and uh twi and roots inside of its chest, uh, causing like little torch lights to gleam as they burn the wounds. The creature screeches out um, as the flame sphere kind of smacks into it. Its skin is wooden, right? Uh, yes. Uh, for uh, the for the sake of burning, though, a bark skin does not burn. I will confirm that. I was gonna say because flaming sphere is anything flammable lights on fire as it runs into it. Yeah, bark skin is not flammable. Surprisingly, it is magic because it is just magic. All right, that's all then. As you uh, yell at it, uh, Cinder, what would snow? What's snow doing? I mean, snow's already in range. They're just gonna keep swinging. All right, let's see what we got. Bap, bap, bap. The snow. I'm gonna uh, try and even... steal the kill. That's a that's an at twenty. That's an at twenty. Uh, roll to confirm, please. If the first confirm is from a fucking snow leopard, would be funny. No. no. 
the what's the modifier? Because you have to see if you actually get a crit or not. That's uh, plus seven. Plus seven. Uh, to hit that does not. Yeah. So I just so get it's just normal hit. hit. Yep. Hey, uh, ten damage. Hit, though. Two. How much damage? Ten. Ten. ten? Uh, as you or as um the or as snow jumps up onto the cre- or onto old sweet tooth or old big tooth, uh, tearing into his face once more and raking at it, uh, the creature seems to screech out in pain and roar as it does. Uh, is that it for Snow's turn? I have two swings, but I don't think they can hit. I'm gonna try anyway. Feel free. Uh, twenty. Nope. And twenty one. Nope. Yeah, the claws only have a plus two to hit. Hey, it's yeah. it's worth a shot. They're trying. Uh, Rad, you're up as you finish your transformation behind this bush. What would you like to do? Uh, sweet. I yeah, I will poke my head out and see how far this creature is from me. Uh, about 10 feet in front of you, however, or sorry, uh, 15, it should be 15 feet in front of you, actually, my uh, apologies, because you'd have um, the, the five foot radius uh, or uh, reach thing. So uh, about 15 feet in front of you, uh, roughly, is where he stands. Um, I will say, uh, Cinder and James are about 10 feet uh, in front of you and kind of right uh, between you and this creature. However, or they also only stand at under five feet uh, themselves. So. Okay. <laughs> and it's looking relatively hurt. Uh, its mouth is bleeding, or it seems to be bleeding from the mouth and coughing out, and you can hear these sounds of Roland go <laughs> digging into its side like a butcher. Uh, okay. Rad, with his fucked up vocal cords and cut out tongue makes a horrible gurgling scream of war as he sprints forwards. Oh no. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh, uh, Jesus. You guys see Rad with with uh just dozens and dozens of like bone spines sticking out of his back and his arms. Uh, and a now also screaming sword made of laughing and gibbering teeth. Uh, and he is going to, um, uh, first, um, because I am moving, Mm -hmm. uh, like while I'm moving, uh, three of the spines uh, in my back, I like lean forward while I'm sprinting and they point forward and shoot out of my back at the uh, Sabertooth? What are they called? Smile fangs? Oh, this? It's called a uh, Smilodon. Smilodon. Yeah. I'm going to shoot three. Oh no. <laughs> Um, there we go. That is a uh, bummer. Twenty six to hit. Nope. Thirty three to hit. Yep. And a thirty to hit. Yep. Damn. Investiture of the spy devil. Yep. No, I, I caught that when he when he started describing the, the, the change and when he pulled out a weapon. Only certain devils come with their own weapons when they transform. Oh, no, those are two separate spells, I think. Well, uh, no, yeah, I think that's the devil's ability. Uh, no, I think that's oh. the ability of pain and fear. Well, Red's uh, giving him a, se- give him a second. He has muted. I'm going to skin the and wear him like a pelt. Oh, He's God. gonna be. My... Oh no! Dang, well... man. A bit brutal. He's oh, a rival. Kill him. He's a rival druid circle. Okay. I don't think those other. You think, uh, you, think you can take on the smile oh, at can, can we absorb him? Yes. Sorry about that. 
Uh, boom. So that is uh, 21 damage plus. I'm going to burn one of my little things to add some sneak attack damage. Oh no, no sneak attack. This is uh, turning out to be just like uh, Stumpy all over again. <laughs> oh, don't worry, it's just five points. Oh, okay, well, five it makes me points. feel better. Uh, yeah, as, you, as the spines spike into the creature, slamming into its chest once more, it roars out as they seem to slam in. The uh, third one kind of poking go, seems to hit center mass as the damage of the creature on its side and its heavy breathing that was beginning to already kind of pick up. Uh, the creature collapses on, on under its own weight uh, and drops to the ground, uh, dead and unmoving. Oh, well... As Rad just kind of stands there, surprised. What yeah. the rest of my turn was, it was going to be shooting those as I run forward and then jumping onto its back. As you go to get ready to leap think... over, you as look over at James and Cinder as the book creature drops to the ground. You just kind of like get stop, looking at the creature as it doesn't move. <laughs> <laughs> look around, and kind of put your foot back I down the ground. Look around looking absolutely just like maybe cute if i wasn't so horrifying because i'm a tiny little guy <laughs> you're just a little owl that now looks like an elf just a little owl guy a fiendish, a fiendish uh, abomination. abomination yeah i look up and i throw my hands up in victory thumbs I up to rad i join him i say well done <laughs> Now we have the entire rest of the pack, those packs of his to deal with. Well, first, I'm going to start using Ray of Frost to put out the fire on the building. <laughs> That's probably a good idea. And go ahead and mark your spell slot off as you uh, freeze the fire. Uh, uh, in. It can cast infinite Rays of Frost specifically. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> as you start like using it like a fire extinguisher going down the line. <sighs> mm-hmm. Oh. Uh, James, you think there's anything worth grabbing off this corpse? Well, we should probably right. eventually drag it back, but the, <laughs> immediately grab the teeth. You said there were flowers, <laughs> creature, right? There's something growing on the, the back of it. Yeah. Can I identify to see if they're worth anything? Um. Uh. Yep. Go ahead. Um. Give me a knowledge, <coughs> nature, or survival check. They will give you two different answers. Am I better at? Oh, let's see. Nature. Oh, definitely nature. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Thirty-one. Um, as you you recognize this material as a material called Death's Grace. Um, the flowers themselves come in a multitude of colors, uh, but seem to are commonly found on creatures uh, marked uh, for death, most often due to old age. Um, it is a flower that typically likes to seed in the spines of older creatures because it will slowly crack the spines and uh, like absor like drink the marrow out of them as they are dying, uh, kind of speeding up the process of the creature's uh, death as it does. Um, the flower is otherwise completely harmless um, and does really nothing other than create a very pretty dye as it can be pretty much turned or it chain or it can come in different any pretty much any color that is natural as you found. Um, these uh, flowers can grow really anywhere. Uh, they're most common, though, in tropical or, um, like, uh, warmer climate climates. Um, beyond that, uh, you're not sure what it's doing here. Go ahead. I look over the flowers, and I look at James and go, these are tropical. Well, that's odd. These don't belong here. I mean, are they useful for anything that we might want to use them for otherwise? I just shake my head. You can make a die with them. That's about this, it. This uh, Smilodon was tasking the others with uh, heading out to gather flowers for something. Some sort of red flower. Red flower. A little worrying. Or what else did he say to you, Uncle? Because you two had a conversation. Doesn't the capital grow red lyrium flowers? Isn't that... I'm pretty mm -hmm. sure the flowers grow in the um, the caves under 
Uh, there, yeah, it's, uh, as far as it goes, no, no there's been mention of the red, little uh, red lyrium flowers before, but, uh, no one's been able to link the, uh, flowers to red lyrium itself, um, it's just that they find these, uh, flowers that typically grow on lyrium and are noted to be reddish in coloration. Um, yeah, I was just, we knew that they grew in the capital. Um, get, uh, you can all give me knowledge history check or knowledge local. Uh, history. Let's go. Rad is very not concerned with the knowledge here. Okay. He's, uh, kind of investigating the body a little. Specifically, the big ol' fucking saber teeth. The, the purple and uh, purple. green one? Which we mm -hmm. will be taking those, definitely, and I will um, be And he's, he's poking the teeth where they're kind of sticking out of its now-dead mouth with mm -hmm. his, like, tooth sword. Mm -hmm. uh, and he's trying to figure out a way that he can put those teeth in his teeth sword. <laughs> uh, give me a heel check. Um... Cinder sixteen, okay. Uh, as you kind of think, nineteen is not local. And uh, Rome is nineteen. And mine's a history for twenty-two. Okay. Uh, between the three, uh, three of you, you managed to recall hearing comments about the uh, um, the, the supposed flowers growing beneath the mountain. Um, they're noted to be red. However, the belief that these are made from a material called red lyrium or uh, a red death ore um, is a very vastly exaggerated, exaggerated uh, uh, comment to most uh, frost giants. And having been in Velcomen, most of the uh, members of the academy believe that the concept of red death ore is a myth and it can't naturally exist. Therefore, the belief that those flowers are actually related, um, it's, they believe it's something else. Similar to the idea of like dark, the dark silver, um, they're assuming it has to do with another magical causation. Um, would be what you well, we've, mm -hmm. we've seen red lyrium. Have you? Yes, yeah. that flower. Yeah. Oh, yes, for sure. Oh, yeah, yeah the, in the, one, top the, lands. One, in the, shape of the one in the Tothlands, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. The one that was in the shape of a flower, that was carved in the shape of a flower. Yeah. And then we saw the yep. pickaxe also turn into the same lyrium when it hit it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But we know it spreads, which is... Terrifying. Yeah. Uh... We, uh, but as you kind of think about that between the, the three of you, you're, uh, that's about all you managed to kind of pull together. Uh, I will say the rest of the uh, the four packs are still kind of on their way. So what do I do with that regard? Um, honestly, this little area here would be bad to set up to take them on because they can't all pounce in here at once. How wide is this little alley that we're in? About 20 feet wide. And I can block off the entryway with a spell. That'll at least make it so that when they run through it... I can get behind that. I, mean, I can stand at uh, and stop them from getting any further. Can someone what get me on the roof? Actually, yes, I can if you get right by it. Okay. If you get right by the building. Can we explain what you're doing instead of just saying... What are you doing? I pull out the wand of levitate. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and uh, I think I should possibly get up there as well. I'll use this on myself afterwards. Man, I grabbed Haboob for a reason. It's an AoE spell. <laughs> uh, I have Caltrop. One wall I can stand and funnel. Be a funnel. So not, not all of them can attack at once. As you uh, popping the wand of levitate to get Cinder on the roof too. Okay. Brad, are you a more of melee or ranged? You want to be down here with me or up there? As Rad kind of looks at the teeth, uh, kind of thinking about them. Yes. Uh, so with. Uh, with. 
all the bonuses that I can stack on, we are looking at 35. Uh, you're almost 100% sure if you stuck those teeth into your weapon, uh, it would make your weapon unbalanced. You wouldn't be able to pick it up. Damn, they're that big, huh? Oh yeah, these uh, these two teeth, huge these, sa- these saber teeth are both uh, ten feet long, um, and about uh, almost about uh, three feet thick at their <sighs> thickest. He makes sword. Ten feet long. Yeah, this. And creature, how many feet? Thick? Uh, about three feet thick at its uh, at its thickest. This is a Damn. this is a huge creature. Yeah. This saber tooth looked like it could have probably fed on frost giants with comfort. Bro's got chode teeth. <laughs> um, but as you guys kind of like start to get yourself prepared, getting a, uh, the wall behind you, getting levitated up onto the roof with James, uh, getting prepared to protect and defend this corpse, um, you all watch as the Smilodons start to kind of uh, flow their way towards you a lot. Uh, and we're going to end session there today because one of our party members has to take off uh, here in like 20 minutes, and this is going to be a lot of combat. So we thank you all for watching. We're sorry it is a short session today, and we hope that you enjoyed as uh, always. See you next time.